All want to go home, uh, I assume. You're not going to stay here for the rest of your life. So any idea of, of what could happen here? Why do we get such a broad peak? When we inject it, when there's a lot of water in the HPLC, where this compound should be retained well. So what happens here? is that uh, this compound, it's in the citronitrile water, it comes into this small piece of tubing with water and it precipitates out. Um, this is actually, it's a lot of the blue bacteria that, that, that makes this, that kind of makes it as an armor outside their cell membrane. And if you do that, you don't want a compound that is very water soluble. No, it's too expensive to produce. So this is actually kind of a medium polar compound, but on the other hand, it's not very water soluble. So this is why we cannot inject any sample in 100% water, because then some analytes will also precipitate out. So one of the tests we often do is that we inject the samples to see if any you can actually see peaks disappearing by uh, if you inject it too low organic. So, so, so all this analysis and screening is also compromised because you could also go in the other way and you can get the, your compound precipitating out as powder and then it has to redissolve and that's a time process that takes a lot of time. Um, I can, yeah, you can actually see this. So this is actually some true samples I've made together with Lars Helgren. Uh, these are some rats that have lived by stuff that we were eating today. And then the only thing they have been allowed to drink is actually water with sugar in. So we were looking at some lipids. And first we looked at the samples and some of the analyzes, and this should be some special phospholipids. You see they look like really crap. It looks like there's a lot of isomers and you cannot resolve them. And here you could say, well, probably one, two, three, there could be more, this is terrible. Then we actually, oh, and this is the standard way of extracting them. So we will often end up in this mixture with chloroform methanol. You can dissolve anything. Problem is that uh, then we have a, a postdoc and she evaporated these samples down took them up in isopropanol and inject them again. And now we get one nice peak here. And if we look at the area, this is the intensity, but actually it turns out that all this fits well there. So um, it is very important that we inject our samples, right? So here's actually the target. And it will stay in the chloroform droplets that will be formed in the column and they will be carried down for a while, and then this is why you get these ugly peaks. To make things even more complex, um, this is um, an analyte, and it likes to stick onto the whatever sits in the column, also except the, the column face itself. So this, in this case, we had the instrument running, the peak looked like a red curve, looked like shit, really, really shit. Uh, we took the same brand of column, it was the same batch, everything, new one, into the system, two blank runs, and sip this one through, and now we get a nice peak. So what happens here is probably some kind of ion exchange, and, and that there are some crap sitting inside the column, and our analyte is sticking to that. So that's why we also have to change the column. And the worst thing was that there were some other analytes here, they were not affected at all. So sometimes we have to look into the, we have to have some very troublesome compounds to evaluate our, our analysis. Okay. I talked about before that when we mix things, um, you know, if we take some liquid in here and takes it out, and we have a mixer inside, it takes a while. You had that first semester, you have this classical, or the first order 
logarithmic decay. So this is also what happens. And this is why we want these very small mixtures and everything technology-wise. But anyway, we have to cope with this. So, so again, this is the easy one. This is the one, the blue one here. This is the one you just type into the computer, and then you think, this is what I get. The red one, if you have a very modern system, is probably what you get. But if you have an older system, or a system where you just put in a bigger mixer, you could have the purple here. So it also means that you can think that you have two identical HPLC systems in the lab, and they may not be so. Also, another thing is that the scientific papers you read, that this was done on a water security or a Agilent 1100 system, they're probably going to write which mixer size they have. So you cannot use their retention times, even though you buy the same column, because you don't know the delay of their gradients. So we call this, is, this is a really, really important part also because when you go the other way, you can program this one down, but you have a delay. So what you type into your gradient table is not what you get. And we have another small assignment here. So Let's say that you programmed it in and uh, you say, well, I just need two minutes for it to equilibrate after the gradient and then I'm happy. Um, then what you really get is this purple curve. So you can also see we don't get down to the percent organic we think we get and um, what do you think happens? If we inject it again here 20 minutes here and we are here, what, what would happen? We will have good retention of our analyte. No. So in this case, we'll have no retention. So this can be very frustrating because you're coming into your HPLC system, you're putting on your solvents and everything, you do the first run and you get a nice retention of five minutes and you say, well, this is perfect. I do another one in the run just to test and suddenly you don't get the same retention time. And that's because you do not have equilibration of your system. And uh, so what you need here is really perhaps to keep down your, your system perhaps up to 10 minutes to really get your column equilibrated right. And of course, the lower the flow rate in your column, the longer this takes. Um, you could actually have seen this. You recall the curve. I showed you of the pressure of the system. There you would see the pressure would not really have uh, gone as high because you know when you have the pressure when you're here it should be the same here. So in this situation you would have seen that I have a lower pressure because I actually have more acetonized trial. So looking at the pressure curves could also have told you this. But this is the most common error I see and I see it a lot also at quite experienced people. Um, so also to make sure you understand everything, uh, can we make a gradient run with these solvent systems? Let's just say one minute and then we'll continue. You didn't make a yeah, let's go to, yeah, you have some practical stuff, that's right. So, yeah. uh, so the rest of the day are exercises. We uh, take the detectors last. the exercises and then you can go home whenever you want to and are done. But before you go, last time we talked about that we're going to need a second exam day. Um, hope you all check your calendars. We we're going to try it with a poll. We also know that a lot of people are not here today. And you can also just tell us the old-fashioned way whether or not 
It's best for you that it will be on Monday the 14th or Wednesday the 16th. So. Yeah, we have the 15th also. That's the yeah, the 15th is the official exam date. So we'll try this and, uh, of course, just come and tell us if one of these. 50, 50. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, but we'll see and we'll try, of course, if some of you can only do the 15th, so of course you'll be examinated on the 15th, but if anyone is capable of doing one of the other things, that would be excellent. Also, I think three or four teams signed up for the practical exercise on next Monday. And if you want to have any kind of say in who you're going to be in the group with on the lab exercises on Monday, please send me an email. It doesn't matter if you're only two people or, you know, I don't know anyone on this course, I don't mind. Just send me an email and I'll set the teams together and it will be ready on, on Monday. But it will be nice for you to be in the lab with the same people as you're going to do the, uh, the big assignment. But yeah, vote for that whenever, and then do the exercises, and then, yeah. So from now on, only exercises for today, and then we'll take the detect test next time. So yeah. we just wait for this one, and then. So when you reach the exercise. And we assume the rest will prefer. The 15th. Yeah. <laughs> so, the exercise on page 17, that will be the last exercise for this session. So, you have absolutely no idea how to solve it for the last uh, five exercises. Please don't do that. <laughs> And we will also upload the solutions so you can sit and look at them. And <laughs>